most of them I'm gonna say were good. <laughs> I felt incredible, but it also felt kind of lucky. What's up guys, I'm City Wells and welcome back to Barstool Outdoors. This week I'm taking Feidelberg and Donnie Does out of the office and into the flooded timber of Arkansas. There he is. is that him and his Pico? <laughs> and his Pico! Look at him! He's not look like he's about to go duck hunting. Hey, how are ya? What's up? <laughs> Look a little posh to be going duck hunting. I, I said you look like someone about to go to an away basketball game in high school. It's crazy. It's crazy. This outfit. It made sense for a couple of things I was doing today. Okay. It is ridiculous to land in this. I completely <laughs> knew that as I was landing. It's the greatest <laughs> land. Donnie, yeah. how are you feeling? Pumped. I've been waiting to get my revenge on ducks for the last five years, hey. and the time has come. Are you well, so hey. pumped? <laughs> I don't. Honestly, I don't know what I am. I'm very nervous. I'm feeling good about it. Are you comfortable with a shotgun? Am I comfortable with a shotgun? I've only shot a gun once in my life. I went sporting clays and I hit nothing the whole day. Are I was comfortable walking with it. Well, that's good. All right, that's yeah. good, yeah. Are yeah. you like comfortable? You're gonna be in the water, you know? Oh, come on, me and water? We go together like oil and water. Are you gonna rock the Pico tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> my bag is full of like, I haven't unpacked from a trip before Christmas. And then I have like just Christmas stuff in it. And then Sydney was like, bring sweatpants. I have a pair of sweatpants. I have no idea what's in my bag. I, okay. I'm sure I'll be able to be fine with whatever's in there. And how, what time do we go? We leave early. So we're probably gonna, I'm guessing like 4 a.m. is a wake up call, 4.30. Dog, did you just say 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, baby. 4 a.m. We gotta, we what gotta wake up. What ducks get up? <laughs> <laughs> 30, 4 a.m., she said. 30 minutes before sunrise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did know it was a morning sport. I didn't know to what extent. I can honestly say I've never He's very professional. He's actually trying to sell you something. Yeah, what you got in the brief? Yeah, what's your insurance deal? Good friends. Yeah, Mallory, Dr. Mike, and Matt. And these are our Ducks Unlimited crew. So we're really excited to be back. Different spot this year, but still in Arkansas. And then Feidelberg and Donnie have never killed a duck, have never hunted in their life. So it's gonna be a really fun couple days. So we're just gonna be hanging out in the grass, ripping these things until the ducks freeze tomorrow. So we're gonna be leaned up against a tree, then you'll see some ducks working, and you'll hit them just at dinner. I'm like, so you gotta trick them. So you gotta, you gotta know how to talk to them. Yeah, I even heard that like you shouldn't look up too much because if they see your, if they see your face, they'll get freaked out. Exactly. So like if they're right above you. You don't want to be doing like this because then they can see all the white and they'll flare them. You'll hear them pick up and they'll leave. So like if they're right above you, you want to keep your head down. And then they'll swing out. Whenever they come in, somebody will be like, kill them. And then you come up and shoot them. <laughs> I will give you a hundred bucks right now. Okay. If you can tell me what kind of duck that is. Okay, so it's not a mallard because mallards have the green heads. Okay, so exactly. Now, okay, it's a process of elimination. Process of you. elimination. Okay. Now, there's a hundred bucks. What, I mean, I would say something maybe like a brown breast duck. Does that <laughs> sound right? But nope, uh, it's not that. I, I think you're kind of close. Yeah. A lot of times, ducks or birds will be named sort of a combination of a color associated with a portion of the body. This is a redhead. <laughs> oh, that's really close. Really close. I'm okay. so glad that wasn't ready. <laughs> right. I would have just lost a hundred bucks. Hey, that's a good guess though. I'll give it to you. Yeah, because I heard Sydney mention redheads on the way here. Well, that's a that's very close. Okay. If that flew through and we just saw that in the morning, some people might get it mixed up with the redhead. Right. Oh, there's redhead, but it's, that's actually called a canvas bag. A what bag? <laughs> a what? A canvas bag. A canvas bag. Okay, final bird, you're up. All right. There is a hundred dollars on the line. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. What kind of duck is that? That's got to be red. 
No. Come on! I thought that was it, dude. I thought I had it. I thought, honestly, I thought you were kind of laying me off. So, this is what we call a green winged teal. Oh, come on. I'll be honest, that one I wasn't going to get. A green winged teal? A green winged teal. So, they're a smaller bird and they're very fast. Very fast. Tough to hit. Yeah. So, if you get some of these buzzing through the decoys tomorrow, they're like really quick and they're hard to hit. I love the way those little guys taste. They taste super good. So, that's a green wing teal. 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 Green okay. wing teal. Tomorrow morning, shooting light is 6.43, I believe. We will leave here at 6.15. So, we will be here at 5.45, something like that. So we're waiting and then kill we're safe. <laughs> you got it all right cool if you want to go ahead and take I, I, would you, I would probably take like your pants and jackets to your room so okay. that way you can throw that on leave your waiters in here and then in the morning so like mine are over here see i'm gonna come in boom boom pull them up snap them okay. and we're gonna be good to go y'all so. are gonna be ready for the morning no, so Sydney, you told us to bring a lot of warm clothes. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it looks like we're set. Listen, I, I could have showed up here with nothing but a tie. I get cold, <laughs> I get cold so easily. Yeah. So you know what? Like Mallory said, you can always shed them. Yeah. You can't put them back on though. You don't have them. I'm very ready, man. I'm ready to go home. Are you hear all those geese outside? I'm ready to go right now. How did you feel when you go. held that uh, gun? Uh, it felt very comfortable the one time i've shot a gun it was not a gun like that it just by i mean i mean pure look that look had me like i'm a man now yeah what gun? do you think now dad <laughs> <laughs> the gun looks sweet it's uh fairly simple like not too complicated yeah three shots as i was telling him i think we're gonna be real cozy in this stuff because okay, i talked to weird. one friend and he's like be prepared duck hunting you're just cold and wet like the entire time. But I don't know, the sun's gonna be out tomorrow. We got this sh sweet gear. I think we're good. I think we're cool. Golden. Okay, so we're waking up at 4 a.m. and doing a team stretch. <sighs> so that's <laughs> gonna be, that's gonna be nice. <laughs> well, hang on now. <laughs> hang on. Fidelberg just said team we were golden. Team stretch, boy. <laughs> be there, be square. Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't think I was gonna come on a hunting trip and do yoga. <laughs> Thoughts are basically the only thought I've had all day is I hope I didn't snore too loud last night. Aside from that, it's uh, time to go kill. Both sides of the coin really. We're concerned for fellow man, also living things have to die. What are we picking at? You know what, I want to start with some coffee. I want to I want to work up an appetite and I want to give myself motivation to kill a duck so if I just only consume coffee until I kill a duck and tell myself that I'm not eating lunch unless I kill a duck motivation is going to be up here got my marina wool on I am ready to go slept in you know I'm typical gotta leave in 20 minutes that's when I roll out of bed but I'm alive I'm well fights and Donnie seem excited, so that's good. What do you think, Matt? I think we're gonna it's about to be a good time. Yeah, so. We're about to see if these boys can shoot. That's what I'm excited about. No, we're gonna see if these boys can stand the cold and actually yeah. enjoy right. the... Let's, let's, take, let's take a bet right now. Who is the first one to say that it's cold? Fights. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 100%. Yeah, I decided to have a honey bump. <laughs> you know what, that might be the move. A honey bun? I'm gonna go get one. Oh, no doubt. If you don't get a honey bun before the duck cut, you're not a real duck cut. I needed this. I don't know what I was talking about before. <laughs> oh, that's wrong foot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Fights is a fashionista, but this is like the freshest, most color coordinated outfit I've Wait. worn in years. Most important question. Are we wearing the tie? Yeah, we are wearing the tie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. Hi, bro. Oh. <laughs> We're like, we gotta kill ducks now. If we don't, he's just never allowed again. All right, boys. 
Yes, Are we sir. ready? We're ready. Uh, we yeah. One more to grab a seat. You got it. Ready to go. We're ready. I, I've said before, I, I only I fell asleep until about 3.30. <laughs> I was concerned about tiredness, but I, mean, I got adrenaline, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, this is beautiful. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. We made it to the hole here in Arkansas and this is just an incredible experience. Being in the flooded timber, this is all a dream for any duck hunter, especially in the Midwest, to come down to Arkansas, hunt this kind of experience. They're um, starting to fly already and land in the hole behind me. Shooting time's in three minutes. I got Fidelberg to my left, Donnie to my right, and that. And they both have people with them for um, some help, give them a little bit of guidance, but it's go time. I'm really excited. Three minutes until shoot time. See how it goes. coming out here. I still feel like a Navy SEAL, but with more duck calls. I wasn't expecting the first gunshots. That'll wake you up in the morning. All circulation in my hands. Do you see Donnie smoke that? First ever duck I in the Arkansas know. timber. What? Let's go. That felt incredible, but it also felt kind of lucky. Like I was just like, all right, duck, shoot. I don't even remember aiming. <laughs> this is an incredible experience at the Bill Byers Hunt Club. It's really excited to see two newbies get to experience something like this. I try to emphasize that this is something super special that they should not take for granted because holy cow I got a couple shots off two mallard drakes has hit the water got a nice little taste I'm gonna let bites experience it now maybe I'll switch him back if he uh, misses on the board. Good. 
How's your group kill? Team effort. Okay, completely on my own. Okay. All right. Yep. Correct. Yep. 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 Just go like that. Yep. Dude. All right. Now two more. Where? You got it, dude. I was like, if this bird gets hit, I think it might be me. But that was before, three shots before it got hit. So I only that one was me. Most of them, I'm gonna say, were. <laughs> Almost all of them. I'm like, there's no way that was. Me. Can I shoot this? This day's been a long time coming. I've been trying to get my revenge on the ducks for quite some time. They have eliminated the Shanghai Sharks from the playoffs multiple times. My pet duck ran away from me after I saved him from the bird flu epidemic in China. Shanghai authorities said, hey. Duck coming in, duck drop it in, duck drop it in. Duck drop it, I could have got that. Here you go. Nice shot. Yo, Sydney, that was a snipe. Sydney. Sydney, Wales. Where are you going to shoot? Todd's got the camera. Did you film it? Did you film it? Um, I tried to. Uh, you smoked that. It was, yeah, it was facing okay. this direction. Yeah. All right, this is why I should never hold the camera. <laughs> Rock, 10 month old black lab, and he's doing incredible. He gets a little curious, and he's kind of looking at the decoys, moseying around, but he is going on a straight line to those ducks. He's doing really good, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Killed one? I killed the tree. I knew it! The trees! So I'm Casey Short. I'm the fourth generation duck guy here. My grandfather started this place in 53. Uh, my great grandfather was part of it. So we've been here 70 years. It used to be all green timber. We converted to ag when, uh, when duck season went to a 20 day, 20 day season, two duck limit here in Arkansas. So we worked really hard to balance modern farming and farming 
for ducks. We try to leave more back than we take. We try to spread that message, bring new hunters out here like you guys. We just try to take care of the resource and share it with everybody because it's an amazing, amazing thing. So I've got I've got four kids, three boys and a little girl. And my two oldest boys killed their first duck at five and my five-year-old is trying this year. So maybe the next couple weeks he'll get his. But uh, I don't know, it's pretty cool to see them come in here and enjoy the space that I grew up in and do the things you know that I grew up doing and, and do it at such a young age. Uh, I don't know, it's special to us. I think it's what makes duck hunters pretty good people. jerky they're talking some ducks uh, we have about I think that makes 20 ducks we got a, we got a mixed bag we got mallard spoonbill we got one gadwall so it's a really good morning I mean this is one of the best hunt, duck hunts I've been on hey you got them? Oh, okay yeah I do have to apologize to Sydney she absolutely sniped a duck but I was holding the camera facing me trying to explain that like when I had a pet duck there was a bird flu scare in China <laughs> and they passed a rule that every duck in the whole city had to be killed but I like and franked my duck in my closet and hit him throughout the, the whole duck genocide going on so like <laughs> while I'm trying to explain that she just sniped a duck and it was not on camera that's on me or is it on me Pretty sure I was gonna like it. I wasn't sure. I'm a sportsman. I'm a sport. I'm officially a sportsman, which I don't think is true, but in theory. We were talking about earlier this one when we first got out here. These birds were kind of milling around. They were looking for a place to go and go and feed. And then mid morning, a lot of these birds started kind of working back in groups of ones or twos or threes, and they were coming back to this place. A lot of them had already been out and they found places to feed. Kaysen handed this bird to us after we shot it, and so he felt it when he picked it up, he felt inside its crop here, it's just sort of an expanded part of the esophagus where they temporarily store food. And you find this occasionally um, with, with birds that you've shot mid-morning, and you can actually see what they're eating. Oh, so what does that look like? Uh, seeds. seeds? See what kind of seeds? Rice. Uh, rice. Pine seeds. <laughs> <laughs> pine nuts. Rice. It's rice. Rice, oh. So, the farm that we're on here is a working rice farm. There are, there are like three primary rice growing regions in North America. There's the Gulf Coast um, of Texas and Louisiana. There's the Mississippi Alluvial Valley, which is where we are. And there's also the Central Valley of California. Those three areas are also three of the most important geographies for wintering waterfowl in all of North America. And it's mostly because of the extensive amount of rice agriculture that occurs. So after, after farmers harvest, there is some rice left in the field. They don't get 100% harvest efficiency, right? So um, this is a tremendous food source for, for ducks, and that's what you see here. This is why it's so important for us to do not only our job, but everybody that plays a role in conservation to sustain this. So you, our kids, 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 we want them to experience this same deal. Like, you know, the amount of fun that we've had out here, Without conservationists, without looking ahead for the future, the sustainability for, for wetlands, for, 
for everything conservation side of things, it's so important to realize that we're not doing it just for us. You're doing it for the future generations because we want everybody to experience this. You know, this is a great time, the camaraderie, the laughs, the jokes. You're gonna always remember this. Yeah. You'll tell you'll tell people about this 20 years from now. So the importance of us conserving habitat for waterfowl and other wildlife is that's why what we do what we do. So you're seeing all these birds because of the amount of money, especially these guys have put into this property. Literally. Like, it's hard to see this many birds if you don't put hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. into the property itself to feed the ducks, yeah. make them like feel comfortable to sleep at night away from predators and then draining and whatever they do for like this area. But that's like crazy because some people don't understand that where, where all the money goes or how the funding comes, it's all from hunters. It's about 9.15. We've killed about 25-ish birds, spoonbills, mallards, gadwall was shot as well. So great morning. We're going to wrap it up, so take some pictures, head back to camp, shoot some skeet. We have a long day still and still one more hunt tomorrow morning. Bam, bitch! <laughs> so I was out here not in a tie, dude! So I I'm seeing a lot of that, I've never seen that. <laughs> Feathering. Deep feathering. So let's turn it around. I find it works better if you kind of do it like this, you're less likely to pull, tear that skin. So we're plucking these birds now as a pair of drake mallards from the ones we killed this morning. What you can see on some of these, see that little feather right there? It's, yeah. This bird is still molting. They'll go through a body molt this time of year. Look at this. Look at that. There's a little pellet right there. Okay. It was, didn't make it all the way through. So this is a good fat bird. I can al already tell that. You can kind of see the, 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 um, yellow underneath the skin there uh, yep. and so it takes a little bit of time to pluck these there are different kind of plucking there's some mechanical plucking devices for birds that have some fat on them wild birds i love to to pluck these birds and use the either leave the skin on prepare it in a variety of ways or one of the things that we're going to do tonight try to do if we get enough fat off of this what is that right there that was one that's a wound oh yeah that's where the sure. pellet went okay. in we're going to render down some duck fat. It's uh, actually a highly, highly prized, very tasty, almost like a treat to use in cooking. Let What's me... up, guys? Because you're learning a so, thing or two. So I, I also push brought, it down. I also brought a Montana Knife Company knife. I'm pushing knife it down even harder with my thumb. Ah, uh, okay. And I so didn't... I'm getting some of that, some oh, that of those works other a lot feathers. Better. Yeah. Can you make duck wings? Just like you would do a chicken wing? You can, yeah, absolutely. There's every You can use so, yeah. every part of the duck, depending on how creative, how um, exotic you want to get with some of your recipes. Yeah. So we're so not going to keep working on that one. We're, we're not going to do this to today, but it would be wild to make a, a duck rangoon using the duck skin as the wonton wrapper. That would be wild. And it is amazing how the flavor of the fat can vary based on what the bird has been eating. So you notice big differences when you when you are talking about birds that are fish eaters or crustacean eaters, like a lot of sea ducks, mergansers, and so forth. Most of these ducks, like that we shot today, are going to be what we refer to as sort of dabbling ducks. They feed in shallow water. They feed mostly on seeds. Some of them will will feed on invertebrates, and that changes depending on what time of year it is because they need different nutrients and resources depending on what they're doing at a given time of the year so this is a fatter bird so this one's gonna work out a little bit better so same thing right down the keel on each side we just are kind of peeling this off the breastplate and we just go right down through here yeah this is a fatter bird this is a good thing I like to get as duck breast is that the only kind of meat that you eat from a duck no no I mean oh. no the legs the, yeah. the thighs there's not as much meat there. It depends on what kind of duck it is. There's a lot of good recipes you can make out of, yeah, look at all that fat. Yeah, that's gonna be a good. Have you ever had duck confit? Yes, not regularly. Like, I, I, I'm usually a Laurent guy. Um, okay. Wait, is that, is that French that fat? Duck confit, it's like a duck confit. Look at that, good layer fat. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. So, so we're gonna render down that fat later on nice and, and uh, try to even make some duck cracklings out of that. So let me see if I can do this here. What are duck cracklings? 
That's just the skin rendered down, fat removed. No, I don't think so. Yeah, Shout out to Steve Ranella for the skin. little tip there. The plan is to go inside, cook this meat first. I'm going to defer to him on how best to do that. We're going to season it. Then we're going to mix it with cream cheese, wrap it in wontons, make some duck rangoons. So we're about to do some skeet shooting, okay? Of course, the number one thing again is safety. Y'all know that by now. So we're gonna be here, that skeet thrower is gonna be throwing them out towards that way. That skeet thrower is gonna be throwing them out towards that way. And this would be great practice for you to be able to learn how far the distance is you need to lead them. Especially with this wind blowing, it's gonna be changing the speed of the skeet. So we'll just get up there by it, let them throw it. We're about to bust some skeets. Way to go first? Yeah, I want you to go first. Green beans. Green jeans. Green Check beans, it. tomatoes, it. potatoes. We got ham, lamb, green beans, tomatoes, <laughs> you name it. You name it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> she thinks just because I missed one out of 98 is something. Well, on that one, I just wanted them to feel a little bit more, you know, in their element. I don't want to hit all of them, okay? So I at least have to miss one. All right. Yeah. Oh. Donnie, I don't think we hit any ducks today, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Nice! So I may have killed a duck today. That confirms it. One of those ducks is mine, at least. I'm playing a game of Annie Oakley. Pretty knockout much with knockout guns. with guns. Yeah. Um, so she shoots. If she misses and I hit it, she's out. Pretty simple. Confidence level. Just here for the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're playing. Oh! That's you? You're out! Oh, you're not good now? Are your safety's on? Yeah. You're good. Whenever we actually have a really nice trap machine and not have to do it by hand, and everybody gets to play Annie Oakley, it's some of my like favorite times outside. It's a lot of fun. And the guys honestly didn't do that bad. They didn't really- terrible. We didn't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie did hit one. We oh, all- Donnie hit one. one. From behind, but yeah, he did. hey, you gotta, you gotta, it's a learning experience. Whoa. Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! That was really me. Yeah, yeah I thought you did. All right, we're gonna go out Bites is not a schmuck. You're not a schmuck, Bites. You are not a schmuck. Now we're going back to the, the club. Probably take a little midday nap and then we're going to podcast. So, what a fun morning. This is what it's all about, guys. First, he's frying up some little duck tenders as an appetizer for you guys. So these are the little small, basically duck tenders, a lot of people call them. It's a little pizza, it's a little muscle that's right alongside the keel. Technical name is that old supercora coitus. Now the key in cooking duck, wild duck especially, the key is to not cook them any longer than, uh, any more than medium rare. You wanna try one? Ooh. You wanna try one? I'll try one. Don, get in there first. So these are duck tenders? Yeah. It's got a little tendon in there. Pull it right off of there. Mm. Yeah, that rosemary sage. It's good. I need to try one. Yeah. Just comes right off the tendon. Mm. Oh yeah, that's great. Wontons next. We are just uh, dicing up the meat. I finally found the right knife, so 
just getting it into as small of pieces as possible. Dyson duck, baby, Dyson duck. Look at this. I mean, this is just perfect. No. Holy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I have good, man? Wild duck, which you've ever thought. No. <laughs> hey, you know? Man, that is good. Right here, we got some uh, freshly chopped up duck breasts. Gonna throw that in the bowl. And then we got uh, two blocks of cream cheese. Hey, doctor, do you wanna come over here? Yes, sir. Yes. So this guy is a duck expert. He's, he's probably taught me everything I know about ducks. Turns out, even though I had a pet duck for like solid two years, don't know a lot about them, except that they can't be potty trained <laughs> and, and don't make great pets at all. Because do you know why they can't be potty trained? No. You can teach me something. Uh, ducks don't have an anal sphincter, so they, they, they just can't close their butt. So when the poop comes, the poop comes. The only way to deal with that is if you just put a diaper on your duck. And um, I wasn't about to blow money on a duck diaper. So I just had them poop all over my balcony and then would mop it up once a day. <laughs> yeah. There was, there was a lot of poop around my apartment. I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic. This cream cheese gonna, it's gonna have to soften up. Should have taken it out of the fridge earlier. I'm not a graceful chef, but I get the job done. But I think this will be good once it gets all mixed in. I need one of those like professional mixing bowls. And I can tell you that I've never had duck rangoon. I once, I think I tried making them once in China, but that was like, I just bought a roast duck off the street. Um, so this is a lot more special to me. This bird traveled probably 1,600 miles or so over the past few months from somewhere in Canada or, or the northern U.S. down here to Arkansas. We harvested it this morning about, what, quarter mile from here. Comes right back here. We clean it, process it, cook it. And yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know if this is the duck I shot, but I definitely shot at least one out there today. I'm gonna have uh, fights in Sydney wrap them up. That's the good thing about being the head chef. We're in business. Time to wrap them and stack them. Um, there's no wrong way to wrap a goon. There's no wrong way to wrap a wonton. There's no wrong way to wrap a goon. There's no There is a wrong way. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta Did you talk. write the song? <laughs> I did write the song, but if any of these explode in the frying pan, uh, <laughs> how do we avoid that? Duck meat. We got wild duck wonton mix in here, and uh, we're about to wrap and stack. Wrap and stack, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starts with a spoon. Just take like a teaspoon. Maybe a tablespoon, I don't really know. That's a tablespoon for sure. Ooh, okay. That's Let's a big, see. that's a big. That's spoon. a big one. You a, like, yeah. Everyone likes a big Rangoon, <laughs> but when you when you make a big Rangoon, you run the risk of it exploding. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Like, like a Chipotle burrito. Kind of exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you just wet the four sides and then you bring it up and you form a triangle and you pinch the sides, pinch the sides. Okay. And you want to get a tight seal. That's, this, this, that, that seal can be a lot tighter. <laughs> if this one explodes, I'm gonna blame it on you. Okay. All right, so hold it like this with the point down, and then you just take one and put it behind the Ooh. other and pinch, and then boom. What's the difference between the two wrappers? Uh, um, the yellow one's for experts. Yeah. So what are you doing with it? <laughs> okay, so we're doing a competition. Who's fast, faster? Yes. All right, guys. On your marks, get set, goon. Bang. Ooh, yee -yee 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 -yee. Bang. One. You are down, kid. You are down. I rope a doped. I rope a doped you guys so hard. Hang on, Kason's here. He wants you outside. <laughs> 
I will inspect these goons afterwards, just to make sure they all, like, you know, don't have Ex holes. Exploding there. goon. Oh man, you're cruising, bro. Oh, you did the double wet! <laughs> to the limit, to the wild! <laughs> Man, I thought I had you right at the end there. We just got gooned up, dude. I mean, we got guys, gooned up. You guys are probably close to a six GPM, in there, which yes. like I don't. I think I'm at like five point five at best. Really? Yeah. First plate of wild duck wontons are ready. We got some sweet chili sauce right here. Like what I did with the presentation? Look at the, 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 I mean, the I, plating. The, Donnie, the plating is just. At least, a, at least a seven out of 10. Get the man a Michelin star. Listen, I have not tried these Rangoons yet, but yes, I do believe this is my best plating ever. I mean, I might even start with a little. Yeah, well, you gotta have a little appetite, right? Mm. Oh. That slapped okay. my tongue. All right. I gotta be honest, I didn't love that. <laughs> right. I didn't love that whole experience. Very, very special gooned up. This is his first time ever trying a Rangoon or a wonton. Have you ever had a Rangoon? Never. Never. That's crazy. Never. So well, pick me the best like one. Crazy. This one looks good. Okay, here we go. Wow, he tries one before I even do. Oh no. That's really good. <laughs> Really good. I don't know what they're supposed to taste like, <laughs> but this one, solid. This spicy. I'm gonna give you eight and a half out of ten. Ooh, eight point five. That's pretty good. I'll take it. That's actually really good. Really good. How would you compare it to our Dude, it's grouper? Like that's, that's eight, eight and a half, here. like a pretty good review. That's like a nine. Uh, nine. I'm not kidding. That's that's seriously okay, really good. Know, uh, let me pop back. No, I got. What do you see, think? Me. I said eight and a half. Sydney said nine. But did you try it without I the sauce? Sauce. I no. love. I didn't try it without sauce. I gotta try. No, try the sauce. My score. What else is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> that's it. I'll do numbers. I just do. No, so we have we have yes. we have cream cheese, right? Yeah, we got cream cheese. We got garlic, right? Garlic, salt. Now when we cooked the duck. We had it marinating, a rosemary sage so seasoning good. mixture, mm -hmm. and then I added Fish. some Bone hot chili tea. flakes and brown sugar. You know what? I'm gonna give my official review tomorrow on the duck hunt. I'm gonna save some for the hunt. Longer. I'm gonna let these flavors Savor. simmer in my mouth, marinate for a little bit. This is a great Rangoon though. It's wonderful. It's like, it's actually too good because I'm so full. Yeah. But I want to keep eating That's them. That's why I don't like so my stomach. So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep eating. Wild duck rangoon. I can't Outstanding. believe that. Well, Donnie, yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. I honestly wasn't expecting it to be that good. I was kind of nervous that I was going to get sick. It's delish. And you just brought, did anybody else just see him put all of his crumbs back on these yeah. rangoons? <laughs> so it is an extra flavor. Yeah. But now we're going to see his final score tomorrow. Yes. We have one last duck hunt until they're back off to New York and Chicago. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Wait. We're gonna do a podcast and then get some hay. Let's let's take him out with a song. Oh, yeah. We chose the right way to make a wonton. We chose the right way to make a do. We chose the right way to make a wonton. We chose the right way to make a do. <laughs> Hey, shoot it on the water. On one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> Y'all got it! <laughs> hey, that was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's. Are we the only ones who shot? I think yeah. So. <laughs> let's go, Tony. All right, we did. Right, not one of us got one, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, we can leave now. <laughs>
kill. I shot once and then realized I didn't have any more shells in my gun. Watch us go on the layup. He's going down. I hit him on that last shot. <laughs> Tell you what, goons, goons in the blind is revolutionary. I think you're going to start seeing duck hunters all across the country doing this. <laughs> I, what percentage of duck hunters do you think haven't heard of goons? I'd never eaten like, one. The official score, it's going to be a 7.8, but these are delicious. I just feel like they have so much potential. Like, they have the potential to be god tier. Yeah, you want to give them room for improvement. Yeah, I don't really know exactly what I'd do because these are damn good. But, yeah, that's the score. Not a bad day. We got ducks down. Not ideal conditions, but hey, they worked. We got a bunch of singles and doubles coming in. That's what we like to see. And the guys got spoiled. They had a great time. I had a great time. And that's the end of our Arkansas trip. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching Out of Office Barstool Outdoors.